so i'll i'll go with the first point uh, so you wanted me to touch upon what's the difference between conventional finance and quantitative finance uh, so before we get into what is quantitative finance it's very important for all of us to understand the overall finance industry uh, so how i categorize finance industry is uh, there are two two main broad aspects one is the transactional finance and second is decision making finance transaction finance predominantly consists of accounting where one maintains books of accounts of day to day activity that is what a corporate does and the decision making finance is the one which comes before it is that part of finance so where based on experience based on various analysis decisions are taken uh i will i'll not touch upon the transactional finance which is the accounting which is uh, usually the finance that comes into account once the event has occurred uh, we will get into the pre uh, you know decision i mean the pre transaction finance which is basically the decision making finance decision making finance basically involves two types of analysis Uh, so everyone uh, does you know a qualitative analysis and a quantitative analysis to decide what is the future course of action let's say if it's a corporate what does the corporate want to do if it's a bank what does the bank want to do if it's an insurance company what the insurance company wants to do uh, so the first part which is qualitative finance qualitative finance is more based on subjective judgments using qualitative factors so basically these are factors which cannot be quantified in real sense uh, just to take a few example it's the quality of management uh, taste of the product how does the company deal with customers vendors etc so these are all qualitative aspects which go in financial decision making and they cannot be quantified and on the other side there is quantitative finance quantitative finance is basically uh, it's basically use of complex mathematical models and extremely large data sets to analyze financial markets price securities manage risk etc so quantitative finance is more data driven and more quantifiable in nature that is one can measure the impact of variable on occurrence of a given event uh, just to take a few examples it's basically you know let's take for example interest rates around the world are falling so what is the impact of falling interest rates on the risk exposure a bank carries so just you know touching base with the example akash took which was island fs which was an asset liability mismatch example so what's the impact of interest rates falling on the value of my assets and value of my liability uh, another example is price of crude is falling world over so if the crude prices fall the price of all the web um, price of all the by products everything tends to start falling down so what is the impact of profit and loss on the books of accounts of a corporate who's dealing in crude or who's using crude or its by products as one of the key raw material uh, to manufacture their product so that's basically quantitative finance where we are using mathematical models and data sets to predict a future event or what's the likelihood of occurrence of a particular event and what would be the impact if once this event occurs to the profit and loss or to the balance sheet or to any other financial aspect of the organization so uh i'm assuming you know so we've broadly covered the difference between um, you know the conventional finance which includes transactional finance and decision making and within decision making we have qualitative finance and quantitative finance uh moving to the second point uh scope of quantitative finance in foreseeable future uh so basically uh, you know just to kind of explain this in a layman terms uh, i'll try i'll try to draw an analogy with marketing as a field because we've all seen how marketing has played out and the shift that's happened in the marketing domain so marketing very similar to finance had traditional marketing and then digital marketing so traditional marketing predominantly consisted of uh, offline marketing or the print media so earlier i mean 10 20 years back marketing was more 
of a spray and paint approach where marketing campaigns included tv advertisements print media billboards etc uh, this is what predominantly every organization world over did in terms to market their product the biggest shortcoming of the same i mean biggest shortcoming of the traditional marketing was that organizations or the marketing teams were not able to quantify the benefit of the campaign were not able to calculate the return on investment so if let's say a particular uh, marketing campaign there was a 50 crore budget that was allocated and that was what went in in carrying out the campaign the organizations were not able to quantify what was the return that was generated on that particular campaign uh so basically they were not able to you know track the success of the campaign and that hampered future decision making whether should we carry this campaign ahead or should we shut it or should we tweak the campaign and that's where the rise of digital marketing took place so digital marketing is pure play based on data analytics um, any digital marketing campaign that an organization runs the marketing team can now very easily track everything from something as small as what's the age group of people that are showing interest what time of the day is maximum interest shown in the product which product got the most interest etc and it helps them quantify the result so coming back to our topic of discussion on finance is basically with the advent of data analysis being at the center of every decision making nowadays incorporate that is from marketing sales operations supply chain management including finance all decisions are now been taken or majorly been taken based on data analysis and in similar way uh, you know within the entire finance domain the data analysis piece is covered by quantitative finance so quantitative finance is uh, the arm in finance which basically you know takes large data sets into considerations to predict future events and that's where quantitative finance is at the tipping point very similar to what marketing was 10 years back uh, where you know in this decade we saw digital marketing overtake the offline marketing in substantial ways is what we feel that it going ahead quantitative finance would take over major part of the decision making finance so it will take over the qualitative aspects in a major way uh, so that's that's basically the scope of you know quantitative finance in the coming 3 5 10 years um in nutshell the next point is areas of application i'm assuming this means uh, you know what are the career options that a quantitative analyst uh, you know basically uh, is you know would would possibly get placed in so you know there are a lot of uh, in a lot of fields Uh, which have now started you know kind of being open to quantitative analyst the ones which are known to most are investment banking uh, you know banking as a field these were the two which predominantly hired majority of quantitative uh, analyst uh, you know so far and going ahead risk management so one aspect that akash touched upon was risk management is going to be at you know the center in the years to come for a lot of organizations so the large ones today already have an in-house risk management teams uh, the the mid-sized firms usually take risk management consulting from uh, you know the likes of deloitte dny pwc kpmg uh, so risk management as a practice area is evolving um, and the ones best suited to get into risk consulting or risk management are quantitative analysts uh, asset management companies so mutual fund predominantly are the ones who uh, for so far return was something that was being considered you know to judge which uh, policy or which mutual fund is best uh, you know uh, performing uh, but now with return risk is something that every fund manager is very much uh, you know i mean they they paying a lot of attention to risk and that's where asset management companies are also hiring quantitative analyst um, you know in every fund that they are operating today 
and then the corporate treasury departments like we spoke so every corporate every large corporate and their treasury departments have quantitative analysts predominantly from a risk management perspective so that's those are the few areas investment banking risk management banks asset management companies corporate treasury departments are the few areas where quantitative analysts are in high demand today um the last point any advice to students on figuring out their interest and making career decisions? Uh, one most important advice that I would like to give to everyone who's during uh, right now is data science is entering every field, may it be marketing, operations, supply chain management, finance, etc. So any decision that one takes, uh, you know, from a graduation and a post-graduation perspective. It's extremely important to build the right data analytic skills. So, you know, one one fact that, that I would like to share is in the last one year, the amount of data being collected is more than what all of us collectively have collected in the last 60 years. So, you know, with that, with anyone looking at pursuing a career in finance, especially should certainly ensure that, you know, quantitative finance skills are being appropriately covered and along with that the right data science skills which are pertaining to the bfsi industry are covered because that is what would ensure uh, how relevant you would be in the times to come ahead 